is a chimney installation for beginners because I am a beginner. This is the first time I've done it. I've done some research, um, talked to those who have done this kind of work before and who sell this material. Um, so that was my resource of information to move forward with. Um, we had ordered a chimney kit, which you can see is back there. Now, the chimney kits, they will sell together everything that you will need from the ceiling to the exterior. Um, that was what was in the kit that we ordered. Now, we ordered the triple wall, uh, galvanized. Um, the triple wall is to make sure that the uh, heat will dissipate upward rather than outward and um, cause fire damage or burning of you know, anything in your attic or on your roof. And so what I would like to show you is that we already have begun and first thing we needed to do was decide where we wanted the stove. Of course that was up to my wife to decide that, um, but we really wanted it centrally located because our home is going to have no hallways. And so it's pretty much in the center of the home and that's why we have the kitchen in the middle of the home. And so as we looked to where we wanted it, we wanted to make sure that this roof, or excuse me, this pipe, the chimney boot, would be centrally located on our roof because we have a metal roof and I wanted to avoid as many of these ridges as we could to get a better fit. And so we measured to see where the middle of this was so we would only have two ridges that would interfere with this boot that fits over there, our chimney stack. And this boot um, is rubber and it's got metal around it and it's very pliable so you can form it around the ridges and you can run screws. First you would caulk it underneath form it around here and run screws in and work your way around the roof and when you're done you caulk it again on the exterior and so that we measured on the interior Is there any kind of special caulk that you use? Or? Oh yes, thank you. What was recommended was it's called GeoCell I think that's how you pronounce it um, it's construction sealant um, it was what recommended and it comes in different colors. We have a white roof so we wanted it to blend in with the white roof and so we have white. To find this center part we used, well, what's best you should use a plum but we couldn't find that right away. And so we used, in case of emergency, you can use a chalk line. Works the same purpose. And so we went up onto the roof on the interior. We dropped the chalk line or the plumb, which is very nice, to the back side of where we wanted the chimney pipe running. Drop this down and we snapped a line down on the uh, rafter here. And so we framed out or I should say we are framing out or box that will hold the chimney stack. And so we had lined it up, as you can see the chalk lines up here, perhaps you can. The back of this chimney pipe would be there to make sure that we are in the middle of those two ridges with our boot. Okay, let's go look at the uh, triple wall. We can come over here and look at the triple wall piping. As you can see in here, it has a padding, and as you can see, there's three layers, one, two, three, and um, when you touch this, you hardly feel any warmth. Um, so with all of this, this is protection, and this will, for most of the heat escaping out here, and then the air will vent it here again, allowing most of the heat to go up rather than out. So this piece here, We'll set into that box that we're going to frame in. And then on top of this, we have another four foot, this is a four foot section. 
from our ceiling to the top of the roof at the peak is six feet. And so we want to be two feet above the peak so we have good ventilation with our chimney stack. And so we have eight foot to give us two feet above the peak on the roof. And so these pieces just simply stack right in top of one another. This was the boot that originally came with it, but I saw how difficult it was going to be to mount this on a ridged roof. It's not very pliable. And so I had talked to a gentleman who installs these and he said that they make these rubber boots. So this morning I went to get one of them, but this originally came with the kit and with a metal roof, I don't recommend it. Um, those of you who are more experienced with this, it probably works well with you, but like I said, this is for beginners and I want to make this as easy as I can for myself. And so those of you who are watching and are beginners, um, we'll see how this turns out. But to me, I want to do it as easy as I can, but I don't want to um, neglect quality also. But I've been told that this um, rubber boot is probably better than this yeah. simply because it fits better. So Even I, the man at the metal place told us that this is superior to use the rubber right. boot. Right, so I don't believe that this is skimping in any way, but it makes it simpler too. So anyway, we're going to continue now here boxing out the uh, metal for the chimney to set in on the uh, ceiling. The uh, support kit here, there's instructions that says that you need to keep at least three inches of the box below the ceiling. So it's marked, this came pre-marked already. So I'm going to make sure that when I set it up here that I've got this line. Um, even with my framing of my 2x4s um, and then I'm going to mount this on four sides here. I ran braces between the rafters from here to here for support, they're pretty stout, and both sides. I brought this out three inches which is approximately the width of two 2x4s because I need again, like I said, to center it on the metal roof between the ridges for the uh, rubber roof cap or roof boot. And so I'm going to place this in and then put run another 2x4 here to box it in and it's going to screw it in on all sides to give it good uh, support. What I'm going to do, I've been trying to put these, uh, even though they're self-tapping screws, with the angle I'm at, it's not all that easy, so I'm going to take a nail and just uh, act as a punch to get it started for me. We'll see how that works. Got it? I'm going to get it level and mark my line here. Okay, we're right, right on. Okay, I'm standing above the box that it's mounted now. Um, I've got it level. Got a place where I want. You can see I put three the self-tapping screws on each side. now. I don't know, that might be overkill, I guess, but um, it's there, it's in, and so we're going to move forward with cutting our hole. I'm going to hide those shoes from you. Measured from this 2x4 to the center of my stovepipe hole and it came to nine and one eighth inches. And so I measured from this rafter here out nine and one eighth inches and marked it. Now I put a level from here to here and it was level so I know that these two are the same distance because it was level. And so I went a nine and an eighth out marked it, and 
the diameter of the stovepipe that we're putting in is nine inches. And we wanted the back of the stovepipe against this purlin. So we took half of the nine inch diameter, which is four and a half inches, and I marked my spot at four and a half inches. So that should be center of my pipe. And so I'm going to check, check that if we'd have had string for our, our plum, um, which we didn't, we would do that. So we're going to use the chalk line again to see how close we are. Kind of shake it a little because I can't reach it. There you go. I don't think an eighth of an inch is going to... It may, but I can cut my hole just a little bit bigger on the outside and that's right on. Right on. Right on that way. Yep, very good. Know, an eighth of an inch this way. So I think I could. To the east. I can uh, cut my hole just a little bit bigger than the nine inch diameter, which is going to be okay because I have that boot that's going to be around it. So um, I'll probably want the hole a little bit bigger anyway, just so it ain't so tight to fit through. So that eighth of an inch, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Okay. It is not with the cavalier attitude that we cut a hole in the roof of our new house. It's scary. Yeah. We've decided to cut it from the inside, and so we're cutting the bubble wrap back just a little bit so that it doesn't get in the way of our cut. We etch, what we did is we etched out a template out of cardboard for the size of the hole that we wanted. And so I'm just going to place it up in our area where we want to cut the hole, trace around it, and we'll make our cut around the hole. Around the uh, hole. And I We're going to try uh, two different ways to cut the hole. I'm not sure which is better. We've got a sawzall with a metal blade on it, and we've got a uh, grinder. So we're going to try both of them to see which works best. And always, too, especially if we're going to use a grinder or any cutting, we should have safety glasses on. I'm going to have a hat on. Um, also, I'll be wearing gloves and a long sleeve shirt um, will help for safety. So anyway, we're going to try. So two things that we recommend you take with you whenever you prepare to do this are hearing protection and a Sharpie marker. That looks pretty good. It, it, There's a hole in the roof. So how do you feel having cut a hole in the roof of your new house? Um, a little nervous, but I think it'll be all right. <laughs> um, this plate is supposed to set on top of the frame box that we have framed out. Then we're going to set that piece on top of here. And then we'll go outside on the roof and drop that second piece down through the hole. Mm. 
little, little bit. There you go. Perfect. And it's got brackets there that screw into the thing to yeah, help stabilize it. Yeah, once we get the piping it. in, we'll screw down this plate. Okay. Now to the outside. Now to the outside. Uh, I don't know if any of this is cold. Yeah. Because it's not. I wouldn't record this. Okay, you'll have to talk loud. He's getting ready to drop the top pipe down in to meet with the bottom pipe and I'll We had to round out the hole in the bottom just a little bit so the pipe would stand up level. Is it on or back there? It looks like it. It looks like it could go up just a little bit more. Okay, yeah. Not a job for sissies, huh? Mm-mm. All right, I'm up here on the roof, and you can see the hole turned out actually pretty good. Not much bigger than we really needed it. So I'm very happy with that. And so what I'm going to do next is this rubber boot. There's different ridges here that you can cut to fit. Now, I was told whatever size your chimney is, always do it the one smaller so it fits tight you get a nice fit and so this is where I'm going to um, caulk it once it's over the stovepipe is around here plus underneath here and once I get it screwed down I'm going to caulk it around the edges also so I got my caulking up here and then I've got the the chimney top here that we can put on last um, and again as I mentioned earlier we want to angle it Here's my stove pipe. We want to have kind of a, uh, a diamond shape so that when the water hits, it'll run off down the sides rather than versus if you had a flat edge, the water would hit here and it would hold up. And so we're going to create a V, almost like a V hull on a boat. It'll, the water will shed around it. And so I'm going to first cut off the size I need here. Um, and fit it over the top of the the chimney here and if it fits I will caulk underneath here press it in place and mold it around and once I get to that point I'll do a little more videoing okay well here we are got the uh, boot mounted um, and I'm very pleased how it turned out um, this formed really nice over these ridges on the roof. Um, forms real nice and then this metal that's on here really helps for the uh, screws to to hold. And so you can see we got the V up top here to shed water. Um, in this geocell it uh, sliding here on the roof. It seems to really set up nice. Um, it doesn't look real smooth, but it seals. I mean, there's no air holes or anything. And so I caulked underneath this seam all the way around. 
screwed it down with the self-tapping uh, screws and then caulked the exterior all around and it looks like it's sealed real nice and so I'm very very pleased with how this all turned out and then uh, of course sealed around the top of the boot also um, and this seal is GeoCell I believe it's pronounced GeoCell um, very good stuff to work with it looks like it'll it'll work real well um, there are probably other comparable brands out there too but um, this seemed to work real well and we got the uh, cap on it now we're thinking of putting some wire around here to keep the birds and squirrels out and plus uh, sparks from from leaving also um, we may just get a different cap here with a spark arrestor on it um, but we'll see we're, we're leaning heavily to do that but it's all done this is on and all in all I'd have to say that this project really wasn't as bad as I thought it would be and so I'm going to start um, installing the ministry building uh, chimney next and so um, that probably will be even go better than this one. Well, I'm just going to do the finishing touches on the chimney. And uh, the only thing I have left here is to mount this plate on top here. Uh, it'll be above the ceiling. And then I want to go up and tighten that band that's between the two chimney stacks. We had two uh, four foot sections here that come together, fit together where that band is. And that's one thing I would do different, for sure, is to pre-fit those while I'm on the ground. Because while I was up there, I wasn't sure how far that they would fit together. And so, um, I believe that they're completely seated. But I would make sure and pre-fit everything so you know beforehand, rather than before when you get up there. And the other thing I would do different also would be to make sure I have a Sharpie to mark on the metal. Um, and. One other thing is I would definitely use the angle grinder versus the Sawzall. The Sawzall cut through, but if you look up, you can see it was very difficult, I guess for me, maybe somebody more seasoned, it wouldn't be such a problem, but it was hard to get a very nice clean circle. And the little bit I did cut with the angle grinder when I tested it, it, it seemed that you could hold it um, more steady, but it was the sparks that concerned me. And so, uh, that was the reason why I wouldn't, but I don't think I would let those sparks um, stop me next time. But anyways, um, it's still something that you should be very careful with, with the sparks. Um, but everything else, um, I'm going to go back up top and inspect my caulking that I've done up there, make sure it's okay. And then also there's a band up there where the uh, cap on the chimney is. I tightened it uh, last night, but it was getting late, so I wanted to go back up and make sure that I did get it tight enough. But everything uh, up there looked good, but I want to double check it to make sure. And everything here looks good, and all in all, I guess I would have to say that I was very satisfied with our first time doing this, um, except for the few things that I, I shared with you that I would probably do different. Now, somebody who's more experienced than me would probably tell me there's probably a few more things I should have done different. But anyways, for my first time, I'm very satisfied. So, um, it's doable by even a beginner.